bend carpenter here. I'm going to uh, very quickly revisit the fasted versus fed state cardio study. Um, what I'm going to do is collaborate some of the harsh critiques that I've seen on the study and then offer um, a superior study model should this ever be uh, reviewed. So that way we can be more absolute in the, the conclusions drawn from the study. So this has come from a lot of kind of Facebook armchair scientists, which is not to be derogatory. Um, that is at best what I am. So you're sitting there in your pants, picking apart scientific research, offering your critique, when in reality you're not a scientist. And that's why a lot of the, the critiques don't understand why it had to have been done that way. So critique number one. The study was too short. Any differences between fed and fasted states could have perhaps made themselves more evident if the study was extended over the course of several months. Um, critique number two, the uh, sample size was too small. We should have had more participants within the study. Critique number three, um, dietary recall is not a reliable indicator um, of, of food intake. We know that from the prevalence of, of research on the topic. You can't trust dietary recall. People are very bad at reporting their own calories. Um, critique number four. If there are no differences in this study group, i.e. females, um, of an average level body fat, does this mean that a bodybuilder trying to eke out that last percentage body fat when dieting um, would not benefit from fasted cardio? Perhaps not. So ideally we want the study group to be representative of, of bodybuilders in that instance. Um, critique number five, bod pod is not the most reliable indicator of body composition uh, analysis. So ideally we wouldn't use bod pod. Um, critique, number, critique number six comes courtesy, fro, uh, courtesy of the legend that is Fred Hahn. Um, there should have been a <laughs> there should have been a third group. There should have been a control group um, who didn't engage in aerobic exercise at all because that way instead of just looking at fasted versus fed state cardio we could have evaluated the efficacy of aerobic training in general in terms of uh, body fat loss. Thanks for that one Fred. So this is the study that would have needed to have been carried out so those critiques didn't exist. So it would have had to have been longer with more people, ideally bodybuilders, no dietary recall, better body composition analysis, and a third study group if we go by Hahn's law. So what we need for the next one are 50, let's say, national level bodybuilders who are happy to live on a metabolic ward for six months, not engage in resistance training for the duration of the study as not to confound the results, all food would be administered um, by scientists where food is weighed and given to them precisely, so there's no margin of error there. And body composition analysis would have to be um, completed via regular four compartment uh, model rather than via bod pod. So I think we can all agree the chances of that study coming out next, they're pretty slim, aren't they? So. The issue is, is a very, very expensive study to do in that um, instance. So limitations of the research, you just have to accept them. Yes, dietary recall isn't perfect, but you can't get people living on a metabolic ward for that long. Very, very, very expensive to do. Chances of it happening just uh, just aren't, it's not going to happen. Same with, with the critiques of the, the study size. You aren't going to get bodybuilders that are going to sacrifice their time for a study when they're going to value their training over, over that study design. So, yes, there are limitations of the study, but you have to understand that these limitations are necessary because to answer it in an absolute statement would require a study design like the one I've, I've um, outlined. And it's just not going to happen. You just have to accept it's not going to happen. So yes, dietary recall isn't perfect, but it doesn't mean you disregard the study. Yes, it might not necessarily apply to bodybuilders at 6% body fat, but again, just interpret those results um, as is. Yes, bod pod isn't necessarily the most reliable indicator, but getting people, a large group of people do four compartment analysis within a larger study design. Basically what I'm getting at is the results are the results. Yes, there are limitations. There are limitations of every research, uh, of all research studies. 
but this doesn't mean that you just completely disregard the results because you are never going to get a perfect study that answers these questions in an absolute fashion. That's the point of this video. So rather than trying to nitpick things and give reasons to completely disregard the study, just take the results for what they're worth, understand the limitations, don't um, try and draw conclusions which are too definitive, be open to more research in the future. That's it. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them on my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training. Uh, all my Twitter and Instagram pages are both BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching.